the meeting of the uh, OS Development Corporation Board to order. Uh, first item is the invocation. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Chris Cole is going to give our invocation. Before you bow your heads, please. We don't disgrace Heavenly Father. Father God, we come to you once again. Father God, I just want to say thank you. Father, I want to say thank you, especially during this time of the year, Father God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. All the blessings you have bestowed upon us, Father God, even though we are not deserving of those blessings, we just want to say thank you. Father God, I want to say thank you to your daughter, the Son of Jesus, who don't live down on the cross. Father God, as we enter into these, this meeting, Father God, I just pray that we would have clear minds, that we would have open hearts. And Father God, that we would do it with respect for each other. Father God, we, I pray that we would do so with the city of Odessa in, in, in our hearts as we make decisions. Father God, lead, look over some leaders as we leave this place. These prayers are asked in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chris. Move on to the minutes. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? A motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Uh, Tom Minsky, the Economic Development Report for the Alyssa Chamber. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Got to be quick today. <laughs> I've got a couple of things I'm going to add, and I want to describe this one item first. So Norman knows we're not changing anything. This is in your packet. It's a summary on a project you'll be considering later. There was a little bit added to the description, but nothing to what you're voting on with regards to the incentive. But it just in the description box, it just adds a little bit about the um, the capex investment with regards to the building. So we'll hand those out. I also have uh, did a little work uh, for David, and he helped me. Um, Mr. Butana, with regards to return on investment, and this is a very simple ROI analysis, and I'll talk about this in my report, but I'll, I'll put copies of that for you also. Nothing but the best for you guys. <laughs> it's recycled. And then if you notice, um, we've got our activity report in here on, uh, well, after the, after the minutes. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I went to the wrong side first, my apologies. Uh, the only thing you notice on, on the activity report, uh, rather than repeat these, we still haven't gotten to where we want to as far as the reporting. We just signed, a, I think the last meeting I mentioned, a, a new software program. We've actually now signed a contract on that, and, and um, we're getting ready to start entering all the information so that we can kick out the data to provide you all much better reporting on our prospecting. Um, but if you notice on, on the first few projects we're working on, we italicize the new information that's different from last time. So that way you're not regurgitating the same stuff every time. Uh, I will mention on Project Frost, they were in town this last week. That's something moving ahead. That's a, uh, it says 300 to 350 million. Uh, they're now discussing 300 to, or actually 350 to 500 million. So um, the reason you don't have all the details on that yet, we don't have an application in hand yet. I've, I've talked to them multiple times this week. Um, they're going to try to get uh, the application out to us this afternoon. If not this afternoon, I told them Monday's fine with the Easter holidays coming up or Easter weekend. And then uh, uh, you see Project Legion done uh, similar things. We coordinated meetings. We actually had those meetings a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 
we do not have an application from them. And then most of the others are just the others. they're ongoing. There's not really much new on them except for CTV. The uh, consultant finally submitted the application the other day. Uh, they've actually got um, uh, somewhat agreed upon agreements with most of the taxing entities with regards to what, what they may assist them with. Uh, but they did not have an application with us yet, and I said, hey, have you forgotten us? And, and so uh, they put a rush on that. I think I talked to them Monday, and I think I had the application in hand by Wednesday. And so uh, we'll get that in front of the Compliance Committee and move forward with that. And then uh, if there are no other questions on that, I can address the other the return on investment or answer any questions on, the, uh, on our uh, projects. So if you look on the return on, on investment analysis, and I will tell you in, in discussing this with uh, Mr. Buchan, it's, it's a very fluid thing because you have companies expanding and extracting all the time. So what we did is we addressed, uh, I was fortunate to get some good information uh, from Cindy with the city, and, and we pulled out, to the best of our knowledge, actually what they've, they've actually paid for as far as uh, the agreements we have with companies. and and. Uh, like I think you told me, they've met the, before they get paid, they've met the minimum requirements for that particular period. And then with some companies, you may get to like year four, year five, they don't meet the requirements, they don't get paid. So that payment wasn't reflected uh, in the incentives and the jobs weren't reflected if they didn't create it. So we tried to do the best we could to pull information out of, of the reporting that they gave us. So the numbers you're looking at are just what was paid for so that it was, they submitted reports, those reports were reviewed and audited, and certain jobs were created, and they were paid for those, and we've reported those in these numbers. And uh, and now, and I say fluid because those can change. And so we try to give, uh, it's a very simplistic view on, on the return on investment. If you notice incentives paid uh, since the beginning of the sales tax, I think uh, beginning with the 98, 99 fiscal year, uh, all the way up through um, uh, 2021, which would be September, is it 30 or 31 days? September 30. And so uh, uh, going through September 30 of, of 21, so we paid out a little north of uh, 59 million in, in uh, incentives. Then you see your contract expense, uh, expenses with the chamber, marketing expenses, um, incentives plus chamber plus marketing. You get a total of a little north of 79 million. And then with each one of those, you break out at the end there that end column, the return on investment uh, with with the capital investment included. It. And I don't think um, payroll wasn't added in our discussion, right? So we just used it. It's hard to do a return on investment with payroll because that's the one that's really fluid. Um, if they say they're going to build a $30 million building and they build it, that's pretty easy. It's there. It's not going away. Um, but, you know, they're going to hire 250 people. Five years from now, that could be 500 people or that could be 150 people. And so uh, that, that's a much more fluid situation. But in the, in the items that were actually paid for, you'll see the jobs retained, 1,123. Uh, annual payroll, you'll see 65 million plus, actually almost 66 million. New jobs, that's uh, 2,221. And then the annual payroll uh, for all jobs combined. And then, uh, uh, well, that's down at the uh, second to the end, 142 million. And then the capital investment of all the projects combined, which is north of 844 million. And so we took the 844 million and we put the return on investment on that on that figure because that's easier to to track. I, I realize it's simplistic. Uh, there probably could be some more information, benchmarking, things of that nature. And I think in my discussions with uh, with David earlier today, we're going to reach out to some similar size cities that, that aren't really next door to us. So that narrows it down. But um, uh, and, and try to see what they've done to track this and see if we can provide better information as far as the return on investment and the benchmarking and, and what some of our other communities uh, around Texas or if not a little further out in this region are doing. And so um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you see. We got a return of $14.21 on incentives paid for every dollar. Uh, 
uh, $69 uh, with regards uh, for every dollar with regards to what we spend on contract expend, uh, expenses, and then you can move down and so forth. Um, marketing expenses, $112 for every dollar. So we want to turn that around and beat marketing. It's competitive. And so uh, we want to we want to maybe be $113 next time. But uh, as you can see, I think that the citizens of Odessa and the area are getting a good return on their investment. Um, you see what goes out the door, you don't always see it compiled as what's coming in. And so we tried to compile that as best we could. I think Any one questions? of the comments I'd make, because I think it's important that we do evaluate uh, our success, our performance, and one of the things that I think is a challenge to to quantify. I mean, we I, I know we can say that our that one of the things that you came up with was I think our average uh, annual salary per job was like forty-two thousand dollars, something like that, which is good. But trying to determine a return on investment for our expenses is difficult because you don't know exactly where they're spending their money, how much sales tax is generated, if they buy a house, you know, is, are the ad valorem taxes. So there's a lot of things that are difficult with uh, trying to determine. But I do think that, that, that this gives us uh, an idea of, uh, you know, what we're spending and, and what's coming back to us in the capital investment part to me is is is, uh, is a lot easier to deal with there may be some way and i think tom is committed to to look at other communities to determine do they have any type of uh an analysis an roi analysis that might even help us with you know some of the components and and then again if we can benchmark against other communities to see how well we've done i think that i think this will be a good tool for us and i will mention um because we took projects that, that projects that have been paid on, um, the things that haven't been, like in these numbers up here, Nacero is not included in that. Now down here, there's a note at the bottom of the page you see. If Nacero had been part of it, that's a th for what is being uh, uh, not granted them, but, but I guess offered, signed off on if they fulfill their obligations. Um, that would be a $375 per dollar alone, that one project, if they do seven and a half billion. And so that's, that'll, if that happens, that really matters. That turns everything in our direction in a very positive manner. You know, so, so I think the report is a, is a very valid, uh, it's a good report. I think it's a great start because it does, it does show you how much has been brought to Odessa in these efforts. I think going back to what you said, what really adds even more value to it is, is from some type of benchmark and comparative analysis. And I know part of our, our marketing campaign is we we uh, we show show we have spent the dollars and they become kind of our, our advertising piece. I think right now they have Nick and um, Mr. Herman Machineries. Is that right? Job is, job you know, they're, they're basically a testimonial basis, but, but I tell you, as I think about it, what may add even more credence to this is going back and seeing this is where they were, this is where they're at. Because I, I bet you'll find there are a lot of them that have done exactly what you said, that they were at 10 and now they're at 100. And I think having those stories would be impactful as well. I was looking around to see who's in the room Facebook because I think that that's really to the show us because people don't recognize that. And then you just have the numbers, you're going to find somebody who's going to find something negative. In them. Yeah. So the more yeah. positive that we can add to it, the greater. And, you know, reflecting on the um, on the documentation that, that um, Cindy provided me, yeah, there were uh, there were some some projects that, that didn't meet the, the requirements and they didn't get paid and, and we had to get money back or what have you. But there were also a number of projects that on their final report, they were well above what they had committed to and, and they still were paid for what they committed to, but they provided more jobs and more payroll than, than what they put in their application. One other comment, the communities that, we, that uh, Tom and I initially talked about trying to benchmark against, 
ones that came to mind, uh, San Angelo, Tyler, Longview, Lubbock, Amarillo, uh, you know, some of them are maybe a little larger, but uh, I think the thing, similar in size, maybe similar in, you know, Longview's a oil town, oil and gas town like Odessa. So some of those are, I think, would, would be valuable if we can get the information from them. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. The job creation, uh, the re retained versus uh, the new ones, at least 2,220 jobs, is, is that it, the ones that maintain throughout uh, the whole 24-year period? I mean, roughly 100 jobs a year? Well, it, they, 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 I think I heard you say 24-year period. Well, yeah, 97 to 2021. Oh, we don't track. We, I mean, you know, we can go by, and we're, and we're trying to go by and do business retention visits, but we track them through, or the city, for that matter, and we, we assist where we can, track them through their contract at the okay. end. And, and we certainly don't, you know, because some of them are coming on board now. Right. You know, Nacero, Nacero y'all, y'all, Approved that what September 21, I think, and so. Um, but the ones at the earliest stages, uh, no, we haven't gone back because they're not contractually obligated to have those jobs anymore. And I think, and I think, Larry, I think, Larry, it kind of goes back to what uh, Chris was asking that maybe we go revisit those and see of all those businesses who got some kind of an incentive. What does it look like today? Yeah, yeah. And we're, we're, we're starting the beginnings of a business retention expansion program where we are going to go to those specific businesses, see where they're at, and, and, and if they're not where they were, why, why is that? How can we help? How can we nurture and grow that business and continue it here in, in, in Odessa and Ector County? Um, but, yeah, I don't believe we've gone back and tracked them that far. You know, I think in the past we've looked at um, – well, they, they made it through their contractual obligation. They did what they said they were going to do. ODC has said what they're going to do. I just didn't know the basis for the numbers, if it was contractual from the beginning through. or right, so. Yeah, most of them are, most of them are a five-year contract. Yeah. Any, other, any other questions or comments or requests? All right, so this is a work in process, and then uh, we'll just keep, keep plugging away with it and see if see. See how much information we can generate that's meaningful to us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Uh, CBA advertising, Craig. Good afternoon, gentlemen and lady. Um, you have in your packet uh, our report, but I did want to touch on just a couple real brief things, uh, some new exciting things, I think, for some campaigns that we are, have developed and have started to use for ODC and for the city of Odessa. Um, we have new billboard and newspaper designs and also some magazine ads that we've done under the theme Odessa, Land with Opportunity, People with Grit. And you see samples of those in the back of your uh, pamphlet. Um, we're real excited about that program. Uh, probably the biggest thing, you will be seeing new billboards. They're not up yet, but they will be very shortly. Um, and then we placed a two-third page ad in the uh, European and American versions of Newsweek magazine, both in the digital and the print format. It's my understanding in that publication that they're interviewing several of the key leaders here in Odessa, and we felt like that was a, a good time to place something about Odessa in there. And the sample of that ad is also in the back of your uh, booklet. Then we're also using the, long, the same lines with that same thing, a half-page ad that's been designed to run the upcoming edition of the Texas Guide of Site Selection Magazine, and you also have a sample of that. We have updated the, the website significantly. We're excited about that. So we, are, are we in your portfolio now? Uh, well, when, on the new website, you will be. <laughs> That's still being developed. I didn't see the Perryman and stuff like that to the most recent. Yes, we did. Okay. We updated the Perryman report. We updated cost of living and also household uh, values. Uh, we also added a opt-out for people that if they check this box, we are allowed to send them marketing materials, which in the past has been strictly a sign-up for the newsletter. So all those changes have 
which have been made, excuse me. And so we're very excited with the new creative that's getting ready to come out. I hope you all are too. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Do you plan to do any new uh, videos, like success stories? We definitely need to do that in the micro, uh, and we need to identify who the best ones are to do that with. Like, much long lines of what we did on Mr. Fallon. Right. Yes. Yeah. That'd, that'd yeah. Be great. I was thinking you know, we've got a lot of companies that, that we've seen through this that, you know, were very successful. And Absolutely. Some of those owners to kind of walk through their process and and how ODC was beneficial to them. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to plant a seed uh, with the advertising committee. Uh -huh. uh, I attended the uh, fly-in, Midland Odessa fly-in in Washington. And, you know, a lot of uh, feedback, if you will, from legislators. Uh, and one of the, the, the most common theme of the message that I heard was we need to do a better job in the Permian Basin of messaging, for instance, how much cleaner uh, our oil and gas production is than anywhere else in the world. Uh, you know, the technological advances that we've made, the, I mean, uh, there, there's all kinds of things that we do much better in the Permian Basin than anybody else does in the world in, in a much cleaner fashion. Right. And so at the end of the, and, and again, we're getting feedback, you know, August Fluger was one, for instance. Uh, but when you think about that, I think we may want to, or I, I, I suggested at the very end of our last breakfast meeting that we have some kind of a joint venture with Midland. Maybe it's led by the two chambers and PSP. Right, right. Maybe there's a way that we could take our Permian Fuels America campaign and make it bigger, better, whatever, to assist, get industry experts, and we, I, we know we have marketing experts as well in the, in the, in, in, uh, Midland and Odessa, and maybe we cooperatively fund uh, again, maybe those the OD, uh, MDC, ODC, uh, PSP come together and target those legislators who may listen to us. Not necessarily the ones who are supportive of oil and gas. Maybe they're not supportive, but who may listen. You know, maybe they're maybe they're moderate, uh, and then target our voters. Uh, you know, 25 to 45 year olds who maybe their whole lives have heard a lot of false information with, uh, about the oil and gas industry. And, you know, if you think about, I think one of the things that's really interesting to me is when you think about the attack on the oil and gas industry, you know, there's a lot of things that I think people don't really understand, like, you know, a styrofoam cup, you wouldn't have it right. if, if, to be able to drink out of it. All the things that you use in your daily lives, come, a lot of things come from oil and gas. And so I think there's a way that we need to beef up, and I hope that, again, an action item comes out of it. Uh, Renee has agreed to... Uh, speak with Bobby Burns, try to come up with some kind of a plan, if you will, to get the two communities together to, to address that issue. And again, we've already we've already got a platform with Permian Fuels America. Why not use it and, and go forward? So just a thought for the advertising committee because it may come down. Come I think down it's a great idea. And it, like you said, Mr. Boutin, we don't always beat our own chest when we should be. And I think because of that, we get a bad rap. Uh, from a lot of different people in the national media, and this is an opportunity to, to overcome that. I will mention one thing on the Newsweek ad, uh, and also on the site selection ad, we do mention about the innovative technology out here in, in Nacero coming to the market with the first uh, clean energy, or methane uh, produced gasoline that burns cleanly. So those are the kind of things I think we can certainly hang our hat on for sure. Any, uh, any, other, any other questions? No, I just, on Permian Fields, I was wondering how, in this uptick on prices, if they were getting the Well, activity, activity actually on it has been pretty good. And uh, 
we have not really pushed the uh, petition that we had uh, initiated in that uh, because the price of oil came back up and, and yeah. became less less concerning. But I do think there's an opportunity to use that platform to brag. Yeah, I think there's to brag. a good opportunity to get some good use out of it that way. Absolutely. I would agree. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Uh -huh. Thank you, Craig. Uh, Chris, Chris, Black Chamber. Good evening to everybody. No, we're going to have to, Mr. Chairman, we're going to have to reposition my report and stop having to come behind these heavy hitters <laughs> giving this little report. But we just wanted to uh, touch on some of the topics. We don't want to take up too much of your time. We, uh, we're we very proud to say that our numbers continue to grow. And because we're to the point that some of the restrictions has been lifted, we're seeing an increase in our office visits. We're seeing uh, an increase in people that are coming by to get information on different organizations. As a matter of fact, we were fortunate enough to be contacted by three potential new businesses. Uh, uh, the first being an auto cleaning service. The second is a natural fragrance and oil company. Uh, they do natural oils and lotions. And the third is a food truck slash catering service. Uh, we're, we're waiting to hear back from them to kind of see what their directive is going to be. Uh, uh, they're from, so one of them is from another area. So we're trying to encourage them to that Odessa is the place that they need to be. We are also in the process of a major cleanup project with Keep Odessa Beautiful and also with the Woodson Boys Club. Uh, we're going to team up on Saturday the 23rd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. We're going to take a massive area uh, there in South Odessa because what we do is when you enter the city, you see the city. So we have some areas that because of our uh, low impact winds that we get, for lack of another word, uh, our winds create a mess. So we are going to team up with Keep Odessa Beautiful. We're going to attack some of these areas. We're going to clean them up. We're taking volunteers. We're going to have uh, the bulk items, uh, containers out. Uh, we're going to try to do as much as we can uh, until our next windstorm, and we'll do it again. So we're, go <laughs> we're going to, uh, this is something we decided that, you know, if you don't do it yourself, nobody else will do it. So we decided to attack this problem. So our, uh, are we doing our next workshop with SBDC, which is on Thursday the 21st from 2 to 3. Uh, this is in introduction of government contracts, and we're going to, uh, uh, we got several organizations. We're working with a couple of, well, quite a few organizations. I missed uh, Butan. Butan is familiar with this. We're doing a tribute to the Velvets. This is a 1960s doo-wop group that is from Odessa. They were organized at Blackshire High School. That was way before my time, so I don't know about them personally, so I'm a lot younger. Uh, but they were, they, they went through, they were organized at Blackshire, uh, and they they didn't receive the type of uh, notoriety or credit or credentials that they should have. They had records, no one throughout, and other countries was, were not recognized here in the United States. So this will be part of the Juneteenth celebration, which will uh, attract quite a few people. This is, this is going to turn out to be a very big event. Uh, this is... This is turning out to be something very interesting. Uh, we're also in the process of working with a local organizer. Uh, they brought, uh, presented a reading program to us, to uh, young people that uh, 
may not have access to actual paperback material and reading materials that we would make available through certain organizations that we would get this information out to them. So we're trying to reach out and do as much as we possibly can to help alleviate a lot of the problems that we have in our, in our city and our community and hopefully that a little part we do is a big, uh, big impact. So, any other questions on anything you may have? I have a quick question. Yes, sir. On, on the three potential contacts. Yes. I know sir. what auto cleaning is. I know what food truck is. But uh, natural fragrance is oil. I guess that's cosmetics. Or it is. Uh, it, it varies because what it is, it is natural oils that are that are created because some ethnicities do not wear perfumes or uh, different types. So they use natural oils that are created from different uh, plants and flowers. This company uh, come in and they offer those natural oils. They're not perfumes. They don't have those type of fragrances. And they're easier on the body. They are there. It, as far as allergies, that if you're allergic to perfumes, these are natural oils. These are they're not dietetic or herbal. Exactly. Yes. Sir. Okay. So, and we're they they have a very dynamic product. It's, it's very expensive, but we would love to have them in this area because that is something that we don't have, uh, at, at least that I don't. Have. Any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tyler, my CPD. Good afternoon. Um, you got the report in the packet, but I wanted to go over a few things. Um, for the month of March, we had 300 counseling sessions, so we're ramping up a little bit um, uh, from the holidays. Uh, 230 counseling hours. We had four seminars that we presented, and another about six that we did region wide. Uh, I have not listed all those here. Um, the four that we did locally were fraud prevention, e commerce, how to start a business, and then we had one featuring people fund. It's basically financing a small business, is what it, what it was about. Um, and they're a good organization. We work with them pretty extensively. Um, 26 total attendees for the month, so not great numbers, but uh, all of them were enough to keep them going. Uh, we had three new business starts in the month. Uh, those would be a PR firm, a solar panel cleaning company, an online retailer. So a little kind of a mishmash of different types of businesses. We had one expansion uh, that was a, a, um, a restaurant uh, that opened up a location in Odessa, actually. Um, Total capitalization for the month, 1.86 million, with 1.53 of that being in Odessa. Uh, we had 17 additional FTEs added, 11 of those being from Odessa. Um, so overall, it was a good month. In April, we have three um, workshops that we are putting on, and then several others, like I said, five or six, that are being done region by. I'm not going to highlight all of those. Uh, what we're doing is we did intellectual properties actually at the first of this month. It's already been done. We had a pretty good turnout. Uh, we include our clients plus students plus people in the community uh, who wanted to be there. We've got create, how to create a marketing plan coming up uh, next week. And then following that, we have government contracting with Mr. Walker Nation uh, that they're sponsoring. Uh, the government contracting one is a good one. We do that a couple of times a year. Uh, I hope to get more people involved in that because it's something people ought to hear about, how to do it, what needs to happen to get those government contracts that can put real dollars in their, in their pocket. So a couple of the region ones that are being done um, are the uh, our Business Finance and Accounting 101. That's going to be on the 16th of April. And then Grow with Google on the 20th of April. Uh, the Grow with Google one's always very popular. Again, anything we do marketing related tends to get eyeballs. Uh, so that's that's one of the ones we do. It's, it's pretty popular. We do it several times a year. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. James, move train. After 
your last meeting, uh, the Congress passed their omnibus appropriations bill. That was signed into law on March 15th, which included the extension of I-27 uh, through the Midland and Odessa area as one of those uh, proposed routes. So at this point, we're up to three potential interstates for the Midland and Odessa area with I-14, the existing I-20, and then I-27. And you know what? If you go back to the original I-14 designation, we call for the designation of 385 from Odessa to I-10 as a potential uh, interstate to be designated later. So who knows if we can come up with a flashy number, maybe we can just go ahead and make it four and round it out. Uh, the good news about it is, though, even though some of this is a little ways off, it uh, certainly is attention getting. It helps us as we're trying to justify some projects, and a couple of those I'll give you examples of. Uh, we're going to be submitting an earmark request or a, a federal appropriations request for US 385 and 338 south at overpass. Uh, I think that will, it's one that was funded in the previous reauthorization bill, but they didn't ultimately pass that version. And we're going to use part of that I-14 justification for that purpose. We'll probably get a couple million dollars on that. Like that'll be able to be reprogrammed at the MPO level to back out some of the local funds on that project. So. Uh, That'll be a good thing. And by the way, that 385 overpass there is one of your leverage projects there, moving it forward. So again, a good piece there. Uh, we've also been in discussion with TxDOT on moving a couple things forward. One of them is 385 in between here and I-10. You know, at this point, we're completing the four-lane divide to McCain, but you got that last little 10 miles past that direct connection. So we'll go ahead and bump up that planning and development on that. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have a duly designated portion of 158 going back over to San Angelo and 87 there. And in the discussions with the department, since that's both I-27 and an I-14 designation, see if we can't bump that up and uh, give those people in San Angelo who have complained all these years, lo and behold, we've largely seen in the United States without interstate highway. Not true, by the way, but uh, see if we can use that to the advantage and uh, connect them up a little better here. So. Um, uh, also along the lines of one of your leverage projects was the interchange of Yukon and East Loop 338. Uh, and Mr. Cole asked me about this one. But I was prepared. I was loaded for beer. We actually look at that Yukon corridor on a little broader perspective. And so we want to kind of give you a little update because a lot of those projects did fall behind in this process. And there's some reasons for that. Uh, but starting at that interchange of 338 and Yukon, uh, that project at this point is looking at about a May of 2023 uh, completion date, so next summer, a little over a year away. Originally, it had been scheduled for September of 2022, but that project got way behind. That contractor has four jobs or three jobs out here, and uh, they're an out-of-state contractor and just hasn't gone real well. So the project's moving forward, but needless to say, it, it certainly has been delayed. The other portions of that project include the portion being built out, the private section by Parksville. They're still good. An interchange at 191 for Yukon. That project was let in January, and we're looking at probably about May of 2023 on it as well. So again, completion. Completion, yes, sir. And then finally, there's a portion being built by Midland County south of 191, going back over to 1788 by Midland International Airport. That portion was let uh, late June of last year by Midland County. It's about a $3.8 million project. And we're anticipating at this point there were some fencing issues there that delayed some of that. But we're probably looking at the end of this year as well. So the portion that's parks bills connecting that up and, and that portion connecting back over 1788 probably at the end of this year. But again, moving forward, and all in all, it's about a $53 million investment here. So uh, another good piece there. Finally, the last thing, on May the 4th, you'll be seeing an invite from us for a updated Permian Basin Coalition meeting we're going to be hosting on crypto mining here in the Permian Basin. Um, and I'm pretty excited about this. I know it's a little bit kooky. Uh, I've not gone to Merrill Lynch and converted my 401k to crypto, uh, but we're seeing a lot of activity out here related to this. And a lot of folks are investing money who are not from here, frankly, who've never been here. They're building miniature power plants. They're building out broadband capacity. Uh, 
there in Reeves County. There's a significant facility. There's one in Toya. Uh, there's one over in Barstow. We're seeing a lot of smaller units set up here. Uh, but to bring in some folks here locally who are doing it with some energy companies, one of the things I would tell you, I think there's a lot of potential there. And I don't say that from a crypto standpoint. I say it more like refining. Most people don't get that at a gasoline refinery, gasoline is about 15% of the profit margin. It's all byproducts. And that's kind of what we're seeing here with carbon credits and flare gas tax credits from the federal side. So uh, I think it'll be an interesting discussion about some things that are happening, and a lot of which, frankly, we're not real up to par on. So anyway, hopefully that would be helpful. That's our report, unless you've got any questions. Any questions for James? Thank you, James. Why is it, you know, Motran is the only one that does a financial report of all of our those give ups here? I think it's because it's really easy. It's it, well, it is, uh, and it's it's in. I believe it's in our contract. So there you go. So I had to go back and think about it. I see what's in the pack. Yes, thank you. Okay, Larry. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good afternoon. Uh, we have information about the finances for ODC as of the, uh, the end of February. I'll start off at that point anyway. Uh, if you look at page one of the report that included in your packet, Total assets increased by a total of $341,144 to a total of $62,254,152. Uh, page 2 shows total revenues year-to-date of $4,941,644. Total expenditures year-to-date, which is, of course, uh, the total of five months at this time, $953,850. Uh, regarding our investment activities, I reported last month that we had bought one after your meeting, or actually right before the meeting, but during the month of February. We did settle on that, which was a $1 million par of Miami-Dade County, Florida, GO bonds. Uh, they settled on February 4th, maturing on July 1 of 2023, with a yield of 1.3 percent. We also, uh, during the month of March, which is not included in your report at this point, or will be next month, we purchased $1,150,000 of Chaffee, California, geo bonds on March 13th, maturing on August 1 of 2023, with a yield of 2.14 percent. We also purchased uh, a, a $1 in par of North Orange County, California, geo bonds on March 30th, which also matures on August 1st of 2023, and the yield on those is 2.03 percent. Um, as far as the sales tax revenues, which, which are now we're going to be shipped into the month of April, the, the, the current month, ODC sales tax collections for April 2022 were $898,516.27, which is an increase of $227,458.70, or 33.89% increase when compared to April 2021 same month last year. On a fiscal year-to-date basis, the total collected for fiscal year 2022 year-to-date, which is for six months, uh, was $6,670,071.53, an increase of 1,007,556.64, or 17.79% compared to the first six months of fiscal year 2021. With that, I'd be happy to try to address any questions you may have. Uh, Larry, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it wouldn't be difficult for you to include a monthly uh, financial, uh, uh, the uh, income, uh, that's not an income statement, but it's equivalent, the equivalent to that. I mean, we're getting it year to date. Could you get the monthly as well? For whatever month, you know, last month it is that you have, would you include that? Sir, I don't think we could probably just combine those onto one report. That'd be great. Yes, sir. That'd be terrific. 
Uh, anybody have any questions? I never thought I'd get excited about it, uh, exceeding 2% on, <laughs> on yield. It's moving very rapidly at this point. There's lots of changes, uh, even, even day to day at this point. And it's a very interesting. Congratulations to us. That's good. Um, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yep, go ahead. I have a motion and a second to approve the financials as presented. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay. Um, we have the economic development agreement with Downing Wellhead. Next. Who's going to make that presentation? Mr. Cox. That's a Texas A&M howdy, isn't it? A little bit. Uh, this is an easy one. Um, I know we've got some new faces, new names, but this is essentially a represent. Downing came to us, had an application, went through the process, was approved for a grant in 2019, and then world got turned upside down. Um, it was agreeable on both sides. Let's just cancel the contract. There's no way to put it on pause. Um, so it was agreed to cancel the contract, existing grant, um, and then reapply once everything restabilized. They've put in their new application. Essentially what we did in compliance was go through and compare previous financials, current financials, previous application, current application, previous plans, current plans, um, previous investment, the current investment. There are some slight changes, um, nominal. Um, but they are essentially the same plans. They are uh, in Midland right now operating in two facilities, and they are going to be moving. They're going to be closing both of those, moving to Odessa. Um, a little bit different about this project, they are not a company who's going to be building the building that they're going to be operating out of. They're looking for a developer to build the suit. Seven and a half million dollars. Um, that does not come into play on the matrix because that, because they're going to be leasing that property. So it's still considered. It's still considered. Um, when it comes down to the funding level, it's, it can't be ignored. You know, building a 65,000 square foot uh, shopping office. So, but as far as the matrix and the recommendation and the compliance analysis that is coming to you today, it's based just off of the uh, retained jobs. New jobs, new jobs and new capital investment for equipment for that new facility, not the seven and a half million dollars. Um, any questions? I have one. Yes, sir. Uh, you're moving a lot of employees from Midland to the Odessa facility. Yes, sir. Was Midland Development uh, Corporation involved in putting any of those employees in Midland? I don't know the answer to that. Midland uh, Development Corporation, did, did, was there any agreement with them when you picked the businesses in Midland originally? Um, I do not know. I know that this is a well-established 40-year-old, so I know they've been there a long time, and um, I know they manufacture everything in Oklahoma, and they've been selling and maintaining and leasing their equipment out of Midland for years, so um, I do not know about any involvement with uh, Midland. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The, the really, I think, one comment that I would make, because I, I, had, I had to kind of wrestle with this in my mind, when, when you look at the way that this fits into the matrix, um, I don't know that this report accurately identifies the total salary dollars for the contract period. Now, it shows a total uh, uh, annual at the end, but I'm guessing it's going to be around $30 million or so, probably in payroll during that five-year period. So when you're talking about the incentive of $1,065,000, that, that applies to the, to the total payroll dollars of over $30 million, probably, is what I'm guessing. So when we... I think that's something that could be tweaked in this report uh, going forward, um, and I think it, I mean, then, then it makes a lot more sense. The question that I would have. So, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but just to 
clarify right now we're looking at a single year snapshot you would like to see that as well as the total number of payroll over yeah. the time of the grant yeah as it and, it and i would look at it this way so for year one the payroll is going to be about five million dollars because when you add four million three and six six hundred thousand it's five, five million next next it's about five million eight the next year and then added added those up. I think it, I think it's more meaningful with regard to what are we providing incentive for, because it's not seven point three million dollars. It's it's thirty million dollars plus. Agreed. And on that suggestion, um, just everyone that comes out of compliance using this matrix, we always say that this matrix is a guideline. It's, it's not it's not a strict rule. And and one of the reasons is you could make an argument that the the matrix is almost punitive because of that it, it's almost too conservative sometimes yeah yes yeah, sometimes. sometimes especially in these types of cases when you're talking about um, we are not able to capture the total economic impact of these employees yeah, yeah. moving to Odessa yeah. so, yes. it's it's not perfect but it works pretty good right, right. Uh, I remember one thing in the matrix and I, I kind of played around with it a little bit so the, the the matrix came up without the capital investment piece at, at 1.6. I believe it was a little bit less than that. I believe the uh, it was 1.473, and then well, I'm curious, what would the 10 million dollar like? They're, they're going to hire somebody else to, to let them do the general country. They're going to somebody else will own the building. Correct. But technically. They're causing the builder to be built. They're causing the capital investment. You know, that's, so I was just curious, you know, what would the, the matrix have done with that ten million dollar capital investment? Is so that maybe something we need to tweak and look at because again, even though the company is not actually going to own the building, they're causing the capital investment here. Correct. They have the, because it is build a suit. Five originally in the original application, it was a ten year lease plan, and now um, I think it's going to be a five with an option to extend. Build the suit this size out there on East I-20 in Odessa. It's a safe assumption that it, it's really, especially when you look at the cranes and the equipment that they're purchasing that they're going to install. Um, you know, when you install those that size of equipment and especially those multi-ton cranes in a facility, it's um, it's quite the undertaking. So, um, what we look at on the matrix, um, we've got different funding levels. Um, and so we just kind of shot right. We've got a 30, 45. We just shot right in the middle with a 45. Yeah, and I, and I think I, what I saw, and I, I, what, I didn't attend the meeting, but I suspected that you fudged that number up. Yes, sir. And I think you fudged it up because of the benefit. Right. So that is so that that's the that's the intangible. That's the yeah. You can call it the ultimate consideration or. Yeah, the extra mitigating, whatever you want to yeah. call it, it, we just call it the gray area. So here's the numbers, here's the facts, here's the application. What's really happening in this? What is really going to be brought to the community? Um, and in the interest of diversification, we have a low end funding typically for the oil and gas industry, and diversification is a higher percentage funding. So. But I, I like the fact that you aired, aired a little bit on the higher side because there there was the capital investment that's that's not being getting getting credit for, which I'm, I'm good with that. It was just a million dollars in equipment, right? Correct. Now, did it end up being a million? I was thinking I saw an update. It was like one point six million in equipment. It's a little bit more. Um, it was yeah. Actually, I think it was a little bit less than the original application. I think it was one point two, and now we're like one point one. But it's actually more equipment, so I don't know. They gave us all the details on the equipment, and it was above my pay grade to try to figure out what the cost of it is. I would also ask if anyone has any other thoughts with regard to this format, because this is what we want to make sure. This new we have, yeah, we, have the, we have good information in order to make decisions. I know there's been a criticism in the past, and, and rightfully so. So I'm hoping that we're getting closer to something that's, uh, that's better for us to make decisions. You know, I, don't, I don't have a uh, concern with the format. I think the format is, is it's decent enough. I actually have had a conversation with Tom because it was a little, a little fuzzy on the matrix. The dollars didn't add up in the initial. And so in, anyway, we've had a lot of discussions about it, discussions back and forth to finally get there. But one of the things that I am having 
part of is not the correct word, but uh, curiosity about in the matrix itself is the weight assigned towards the capital improvements and the salaries and correct. should it be more? It, yeah, more should it be more instead of just the tax rate? Right? And, 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 and I think that there's an argument, and you know, if you look at this product, I mean, this, this one is an example, and moving a lot of the jobs out of Midland, it's not guaranteed that Odessa will get those jobs. But we have a high weight on the on the uh, salary portion of it. Now, if the jobs are new, or if the jobs are being relocated from another state, there's a chance that Odessa is a recipient. It's, it's not enough for us to be arguing about this deal. This deal, I agree. We just need we need to. This deal's good, and we need to uh, move from this. But I think this is another. This is an opportunity maybe to look at the matrix a little bit more and dive into it. There will be no absolute perfect calculation. Yeah. And now, so I don't want to get caught up in that, but I know that the one thing that we can always point to that is for sure going to be here is a piece of property. We can guarantee that piece of property is going to be here. Yes, sir. Yeah, and that is something that we do struggle with um, whenever we're looking at the analysis, especially when it's a large bill, a large project, especially this one, not even factoring into the matrix. Was, it's, it's difficult. Um, the other thing is, um, because of the nominal difference after the matrix, their original grant awarded, I believe they requested 1.9 and were awarded 1.64 in 2019 and the matrix came out to 1.5 something and we just said change the date on the contract and let's go. Yeah. Yes. You know, obviously you've been moving a lot of equipment from Midland from the shops that are there now. I don't know. You don't know? I know they're purchasing a lot of equipment, uh, the, the large and heavy equipment. If you're talking about mobile equipment. Well, I mean, it's more capitalization, I mean, more tax base. Or tax base. Personal property when you bring it over, and if it's coming, you know, in Odessa, I mean, that's how. I would suspect there's going to be quite a bit of smaller uh, ground moving equipment, but as far as the heavy capital investments and the heavy cranes, the way those things are installed in, in the ground and everything, I'm, I can't really say. I'd be surprised if they were moving some of those. Yeah. Uh, I would entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion. The motion is second to uh, approve the economic development agreement with Downing Wellhead Equipment. Uh, any further discussion? Not all those in favor signify by aye. All opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Thank you, Jefferson. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, the uh, so Casey, we've got the uh, downtown facade and infrastructure. Good afternoon, board. We have an uh, infrastructure and facade grant uh, for Little Jack, uh, Little McJack properties. We'll start with the facade, and this is my first one to present. So if I do it wrong, y'all just slap me on the hand and tell me what to do right. Um, okay, so they are applying for a facade grant for this building. Um, the um, downtown grant review board did meet and approved it. Um, just for uh, transparency, uh, John Harridge did uh, recuse himself from this meeting because he was the one who sold them the building. Um, so it was uh, Mr. Robinson and Ms. Holman who met uh, for the downtown um, review committee. Um, so on the facade, uh, it's going to be uh, 35000 total investment. That would be 25000 covered by the grant and then 10000 uh, covered by the business owners. That's an 80-20. It's a little bit more than, they're paying a little bit more than the 80% uh, because they reached their uh, cap at 25000 for, um, yes, because they reached their cap of the 25000 for the facade grant. So. Just to clarify, so the owner is only putting in 10 or is the owner putting in 25? The owner is putting in 10. The grant will pay 25 because it, they're in tier one, it's an 80-20. So when you say tier one, it's tier one in a certain zone and yes, it, sir. it gets more yes. of an incentive then? Correct. Yes, sir. So it's on a four-tiered system. They're in tier one. They're at 411 Grant. It's the old Gene Collins insurance building right there on Grant. Um, and so because they're in tier one, they get their grant is going to be 80%, 20%. So, so it's, a, it's an incentive because it's an area that we we all felt like Correct. needed more, Correct. Need more help. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, so on the facade, um, it covers, they're going to get new glass, new front door, new canopy to make sure that they're meeting the downtown standards. Um, the business currently doesn't have a canopy. They'll be adding one. Also, the business is currently, the roof line is much lower than its neighbors. They're going to be bringing that roof line up uh, to make them all even, which will um, make that street look a lot better. Um, and then... I they, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you, no but, but uh, does it, in this, I'm not sure I, I'm not sure I found it, does it show which tier it is in the, in the pack, in the pack, what's presented to us? Um, I don't have a tier map in what's presented no, to you. No, does it say this is a tier one project? Yes, on Exhibit A, so on this page that says Exhibit A facade, it'll tell you under the grant request, it tells you the tier level. Okay, it says tier level one. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, they did get their two uh, estimates that we request and then the drawings. And on the drawings, it'll show you the rendering for the front facade that they're going to do. I had one question. Sure. We discussed the entities yes. regarding the being concurrent with the contract and the person and, and our contract. Correct. And yes. Contract. So I have that as a note that we're going to make sure that all invoices um, are corrected to make sure that they're being uh, addressed to the business owner, the correct entity. Yes, sir. We'll make sure that that happens. Um, and then on the infrastructure, infrastructure. Uh, if you'll look at the investment worksheet, it'll go through again, it shows tier one. On infrastructure, it'll be a 50-50 uh, because they're in tier one. So in facade, it's 80-20 and infrastructure, it'll be a 50-50 based on what tier they're in. Um, so it talks, to, it, it'll go through and be uh, telling you what's approved, uh, and their approved amount is for $92,880. 50% of that would be $46,440 for the grant that the grant would cover, and then the owner would be responsible for the other $46,440. What's not covered by the grant brings a total of $72,816. That's not allowable, such as uh, demolition, labor, flooring, exterior wall, stucco, um, and cleanup. Um, so if you add that amount plus the 46000 that they're responsible for, uh, their total responsibility is one nineteen two fifty six and 40 cents. Uh, for a total investment of $165,696.40. I had one question or two. Sure. We discussed the split between high back, between heating and cooling, because we don't, uh, in the infrastructure, we don't allow for cooling. Correct. And one of these explicitly, one of these bids says five ton air conditioner. Correct. It was included. So another one just says, it's in miscellaneous under high back, so I, I don't know how you split those out. If I wouldn't either, but we can find out. Well, I'll I just think the only reason I'm bringing it up because we've had others with real heavy infrastructure and a lot of it is air conditioning, and I wasn't aware that air conditioning is not covered. It only heat, and Correct. so. We need to look at that going forward. That could uh, it's be a huge cost in some cases. Correct. Yes, and it was my understanding if it was a split unit that it would be covered because the code does require heat. Um, and a split unit connotates the separation of the condenser and the evaporator, and and it can be a unit that's combination heat and cooling too. Right. So it's it's hard, a little hard to define, probably. Okay. But. Uh, and I don't remember which bit was which, which one was which, but one of them had a forty eight thousand dollar miscellaneous, and the other one didn't. And, right. And uh, they were both using different descriptions on the high back system. I can but look at it for you. All in all, I think. You know, 
It was the the one with the forty eight thousand was Dan's construction, and the other one was um, the one that we base this off of. We typically go uh, they're they're required to submit two propo uh, two proposals, and we typically go with a cheaper version. Now, what they choose to go with, or whom they choose to go with, is, is their choice. But this sets the bar at the lowest, and then once this is agreed on, that's the most that they can get reimbursed for. And that's another issue. The bids weren't identical things. One says no sewer, and one says 8,500 for sewer. And one, one, you know, they're they're not anything that anybody could just look at and decide they didn't know anything about it and compare. So somewhere we gotta have some kind of way to review these bids to make sure we're talking about the same thing. Because right. One of them says. 48,000 for Raptors and that one does not and, and, and that 48,000 remember I know we talked about that during the meeting but it actually wasn't included in the bid it was listed as a potential line item but it wasn't listed out in the bid uh, so when it, it has the rate but when it has the amount it says zero dollars so uh, it wasn't factored into the bid I think it was as a potential expense so that the owners were aware of it. And I agree, the other con the other bid does not have that laid out. I don't know if that was maybe a verbal conversation, um, but that is a difference in the two bids. But it one of the bids on the asbestos removal showed 6,000 feet, and other one added up three different segments to maybe 4,500 square feet. So <laughs> you're not really comparing apples to apples. Right. Yeah, and there was a, a like a three thousand dollar difference on those quotes. So again, we went with the lower of the two, and then they can choose who they go with. Those were the only comments I had to make. I was just curious about the entities on both the facade and the infrastructure, right? Yes, sir. We're making sure that those get corrected. Okay. Again, just to clarify. Because the on the facade, if they're in tier, tier one, the grant covers 80%, and the owner is only responsible for 20. And this, it's a, it's a, up to a $25,000. On infrastructure, it's a 50/50 on what's covered. So there's a, a quite a substantial amount, 72,000, that's not covered in the grant. So if we break that out, only $92,000 and some change is actually covered. So if you split that in half, that's where we got that $46,000 that the grant would cover. That other half, and then plus what's not covered, is where we got that 119,256. So the owner would be responsible for the 119,256. The grant would cover the 46,440, and then the total investment in that building for the infrastructure would be 165,696. And I would say it this way because I think I'm thinking the same way you were that, that the owner was not paying, not investing the minimum. The owner is and investing and more than they're ready to do. They say they're paying out of savings. So yeah, the, yeah. The money's yeah. there and ready to go. Yeah, yeah. they're still on the summary of the ownership. Owner investment is 35000 yeah. on the uh, facade. Okay. And so what I was thinking in my mind is the owner was coming out of pocket 35 on the facade. You don't come out of pocket. That's a typo on my end. That's a typo on my end. That, that, that should have been 10000 Yes. No, 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 no. That, was, that should have said 10000 on that one. So. Yes, and, and just so everybody knows, this is uh, they've been in business since 2019. They've been running it out of their home. Um, they are here. Um, and it's a specialty gift shop with an emphasis on Christmas. Um, and we're, we're really excited to have them downtown. We think it'll bring a, a niche market and bring people downtown in to our footprint to do some shopping. And um, we're very excited to have them. I thought them I saw here. more than one person here earlier. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I saw, I saw yeah. her ro rocking the baby. <laughs> yeah, and every time she's been in the office, that baby is just so quiet and so calm. But you know, kids never work out how you want them to. So they're all perfect until you're like, okay, we got to be really quiet. And then they have a, a meltdown. But yes, they are. Um, they've owned it since 2019. And um, 
they have their resume, their business plan, um, their projections, and again, it was all looked yeah. over, and um, we're very excited to have them downtown, and they've Good. been very accommodating, very easy to work with, and uh, we look forward to it. They have a really quick turnaround on this building projected, so they're ready to rock and roll. So. Any other questions or comments? I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, 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 facade and infrastructure grant request as presented. Any uh, further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by aye. aye. All opposed, same side. Motion passes. Thank you, Casey. All right, budget calendar. I'm sure this is Cindy. or information that we need to change. Um, as you can see, uh, May 13th, we'll let you all approve it on the 12th. We will send out letters to the contractors, and the contractors that are listed here are contractors that you've used in the past, okay? Um, there may be uh, some uh, that we will not be using. Uh, this last year, for this current fiscal year, in, year in now, there was not a contract with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. There was also not a contract with UTPB Business Challenge. Uh, so those two uh, are not funded this year. And I'm not sure that there will be anything forthcoming uh, from them. Um, we've also listed requests for proposals and qualifications. We are currently working on the RFP for the compliance uh, work uh, that Weaver is doing now on the uh, grants, the compliance work there, and uh, we should have that RFP ready in the next couple of weeks, and we will, um, I think you wanted to participate with that, we will uh, get a copy of that to you along with a list of uh, who all we plan to send that to. Do we want to include all board members in that uh, packet? I mean, do y'all want to review the RFP? I, I think it's a good idea. Okay, so we can send that out to y'all, and um, we would have to, um, I guess we don't have it as an agenda item, but we probably need it. We should be able to let y'all approve that May 12th, and then we can send it out right after. Yeah, and we, uh, and I, I guess I would ask when, when it gets sent to you if we review it and, and return our comments as soon as possible. Just as possible. We, don't, we don't hold them up. Um, and y'all, I guess y'all will let me know do we need, if we need to do any other proposals or qualifications. Then on the June 9th meeting, uh, you will review and discuss the general development plan form. Um, there's an annual general development plan. Um, y'all may not be as familiar with it, but um, it's a document. And a lot of that, I mean, the, the form is one thing. It will not have all the contents in it until we get the proposals back from the contract contractors because that's a part of the development plan. Um, and then uh, the contract form will also be looked at. We will uh, expect to get all responses back from the uh, contractors uh, by June 30th. And then we'll start working on your budget estimates. I uh, hope to forward that out to you by July 8th in time for the July 14th meeting, at which time y'all will have the opportunity to re review and discuss the development plan, the contract proposals, the budget, and all of those 
uh, we can make adjustments to at that time uh, if necessary and approval on the August meeting. And then it will go forward to the city council uh, work session and council meeting for their approval. And then we follow up with actually signing the contract and going forth on that. Uh, Cindy, just to make one thing clear, I, I, my recollection is that whenever you send these items for our review uh, as a board, um, you're looking for comments and questions that are not related to philosophy, not related to what's our philosophical stance on such and such. And that, that's what we're going to we would discuss, you know, in, in our meetings. But looking for, uh, oftentimes it's a question, you know, what does this mean? You know, what, what is this, what is this uh, number associated with? What, what does this description mean? Do we, we need to turn that around because it'll make our our ODC board meetings much more productive where we're not caught up in some of those little uh, detail type items that are, that are not philosophical in nature. So I just want to make sure. Yeah, they, uh, we should forward the proposals to y'all uh, just the next day after we receive them all in from the contractors. And that'll give you almost two weeks prior to the meeting to be able to look at and, and review. Does anybody have any questions or, or concerns regarding this uh, schedule? And I did uh, check with some, and we kind of compressed this more together last year. Um, I did check with um, some of our um, people to see if there was a problem with them getting in by June 30th. If I did not reach out, any contractors will have a problem with June 30th getting the responses to us. Tim, did you have a comment or a question? Not today. I think it's just a presentation just to a determine whether they're, we were tweaking dates or not. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. Let's see where we are. Uh, okay. I want there's there was a uh, supplemental item. Uh, before we get to the committee and officer reports, there was a supplemental item that we had, which it was to appoint an ODC board member to the Motran board. Uh, I would like uh, for uh, Chris Crow to serve on the, uh, OD, uh, the Motran board on behalf of ODC. Uh, does anybody have any other recommendations? Uh, I would enter. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> is that uh, is that an action item that we need to? Okay. A motion and second to appoint Chris Crow to the uh, serve on the Motran board. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. In addition to that, uh, Tom Mansky will, will serve as an ex officio. Uh, uh, to, uh, I think it's really good for our economic development director to uh, to be participating in Motran because there's a lot of really good things happening there. Um, let's see, partnership is going to meet the uh, end of this month. Uh, believe it or not, there's a date scheduled for that. Tax incentive meets next week. Um, advertising, uh, Chris, James, uh, Jay, excuse me, uh, Tim, anybody? Did y'all meet? Um, yeah. Downtown ranch design. Y'all did meet, and we I think we did meet and nominate. We went over a lot of these details, but uh, bring some change, a little bit of change to make a bit on that. Help the petitioners have the right names on the back. Okay. Are there any citizens who would like to comment on non-agenda items? 
this time. I see none, and so at 319, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you all.